Hello and welcome. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful in the studio today. I hope someone out there wants to join me down the rabbit hole. I have um, not made a video in about a week because I, again, got a little distracted, um, but with fun things. And I actually kind of needed to do that. I had gotten to a point in my book where I was going around in circles. I couldn't make a decision. I just kept trying different things and just... I was so indecisive, so I thought, I just need to step away for a minute. And I had a request to do some custom um, birch, uh, the birch buttons that I had made into earrings, so I'm working on that. <clears throat> and of course, that involves recycling. So when I uh, pulled out all my recyclables, I ended up totally going down the rabbit hole and working with that and doing some new things, which I think are gonna be my next series. So if you stick around to the very end of this video, then I will give you a sneak preview of what I think the next one's gonna be. Um, hopefully I'll try to be a little bit more organized with that one and have a plan and be a little further into the project so I don't bounce around as much as I did with this one, but I can't promise anything because part of what my whole uh, video uh, YouTube experience is, is kind of an extension of my Facebook page, which is just a daily diary of whatever creative thing I'm working on. And I do a lot of different things, so that does mean I bounce around. So um, it's maybe uh, not a format for everyone, but it's it's why I do this. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of share with you a little bit of the things that I have been doing the last week. Uh, like I said, I was working on the birch buttons and then that means I'm working with resin again. And I did want to, um, point out somebody had made a comment about, uh, wearing protective gear when you're working with resin. And of course you should always do that. I, I tend to forget because I'm new at this, that, um, I know that I'm, I'm speaking to adults. These videos are not for children. And I make the assumption that everyone's using common sense and reading the safety data sheets for all the products that we use you know, uh, different glues. This is art glitter glue and there's the cancer warning on here. So, you know, we're working with dyes, inks, glues, uh, resins, different things. So make sure that if you're working with any product that you read the safety data sheet and always use the safety precautions. So having said that, I'm probably not going to repeat that in every video. I just want everyone to use common sense and, and follow the manufacturer's instructions and that type of thing. There are alternatives to working with resin. Um, the reason that I did the, the series that I have where I'm marrying my jewelry techniques with paper craft is because I do use resin in my jewelry. And when I have any leftover, I want to use the last bits up. I'm only mixing like a quarter of an ounce at a time. It's a very small amount. And, uh, but I don't want to waste it. It's, you know, while I have it working. So I've found other things to use it on, like these beads and the feathers um, and that sort of thing. You can also do these projects without using resin. You can use clear nail polish, super glossy um, gel mediums, and uh, they do super glossy Mod Podge and that kind of thing. So uh, it doesn't have to be a two-part epoxy. You know, I, I would suggest working within your comfort level. Um, but this is just something I show because there are a lot of people out there. I get comments all the time about people that also do jewelry. And so if they are already working with resin, this is just giving them um, some ideas for embellishments for their journals and that sort of thing using their jewelry techniques. So um, that's why uh, that I do that. And, and I've just been sharing what I'm working on. So having said that, I want to go through where I'm at kind of on my journal um, if you've been following along, thank you. I appreciate all your comments. Uh, I have started now kind of getting some of the products and, and suggestions that people have had. So I'll kind of mention those as I go along in this video too, because those are some things that kind of happened this last week. Also, if you are brand new to my channel, welcome. Um, I hope that if you like this video that you'll give me a thumbs up and click on subscribe if you want to um, see all my future videos. I have been posting, um, I try to at least once a week, sometimes it's more, it just depends on what I'm working on. I really only want to do videos if I have something I think that's um, new and to show you, you know, otherwise what's the point? So um, I've been working on a challenge for myself and this is a stacked envelope uh, junk journal. My challenge for myself when I started this, uh, I did not have a theme uh, in mind at all. 
I was going to do a journal in some format that used only recycled book page paper. And so I decided somebody had asked if I would do another stacked envelope uh, tutorial. So I ended up using that format for my junk journal. So I'm kind of a ways into this. I will put a link to uh, this entire series in the description so that if you wanna watch it from the beginning and participate or do your own thing, uh, but there's lots of fun ideas in here that can translate to a different theme. So I've broken each, each video down into maybe one or two little projects. And so most of them are tutorials. Um, there is a recap one that also includes a tutorial. That's kind of what this one's going to be like. So you might want to uh, watch those. The last video I did actually was a replacement video and it says, watch me first. And the reason is because it's a stacked envelope junk journal, the very, one of the very first videos I did was how to put this whole book together undecorated. And so you can do any theme you want with that format. So that's a good uh, one to watch. Uh, I had pulled a Ricky move and um, forgot to uh, blank out my address on my envelopes. And somebody pointed that out to me. And so I deleted that video. And so the last video in this series that says, watch me first, is how to build this um, basic construction of this uh, journal. There are several ways to do it. So I was actually glad I had to redo the video because I've tried a few different things um, over the course of, I don't know, four or five of these that I've done now. So there's more than one way to do it. And I have found even an easier way. So uh, watch that video and have fun. So I'm gonna go through what I've done and kind of, uh, there are some new things in here. Um, that I have been working on. So I won't spend too much time on the things that uh, there are already videos about. So I'll try to say, oh, there's a video about that already. And then I'll show you a couple of new things. So there's one where I did the beads and just this decorative pencil. And then I'm showing this to you with none of the goodies inside because I, I decided to just go wild and not worry about bulking it up. I was getting a little concerned about that. And then I just decided, no, I want jewelry in here. I want it to be more is more. So it's going to have to sit on my shelf bursting open. Um, but I think it's going to be real fun and pretty. And I like it that to be the case when they're really colorful like this because it just makes you want to go grab it. So I'm going to show you kind of where I've, I've rearranged from uh, where I originally were putting things. I've kind of changed some of that up. So... It's a travel-inspired um, bohemian style uh, journal. And so I everything in it is uh, travel-related, at least uh, a list that I made. So I'm, I'm also going to put a link to a folder that has some uh, free downloadable uh, digital things you can print out. One of them is a prompt list. And I didn't do this initially when I started this project because I didn't know the theme or anything, but I have it now and it has been very helpful because when I feel like, okay, what do I want to do next? I just go to my list and see what I've done so far. So that'll be there. Um, there's some other things, boarding pass. You'll see some of these things, the travel quotes I used. Uh, there's a map uh, that I, uh, just a graphic of a map that I've been using. And then uh, this template for the carpet bag part. So um, there's a file folder for this. I have also, um, if you've been watching, you know that I did all my own uh, mixed media papers because I'm only working with book page. So now I have um, scanned all of those in. Those will probably be in my Etsy shop uh, for cheap, but I'll, I'll probably put those in there when I have them all ready at the end of this project. And then I had done um, a master board and when I originally did all of these, I didn't have the best paper in the world. And so this is kind of a mid-grade paper. Since I have uh, purchased the Hammer Mill uh, premium color paper, and that's what this second one is. Not a huge difference. The texture and weight is different, and I do like it. So um, I'll put the link to that this paper um, in case you want to, when you if you get these, that you want to print them out on that. The other thing that I did um, this week was I also, as I was digging around looking for uh, something, I don't even remember what now, I found a package of vellum that I had. I absolutely love how this turned out. 
So it is, it made the colors brighter. I've left it on this um, paper and I wanted to point that out because uh, I had some difficulty. Even though my, my vellum paper uh, in all, let me grab the pack. This is just Staples brand um, vellum. It's for inkjet printers, but for some reason, and I thought I had used it for this before, but I guess not. I should be able to just put this in my printer and I'm putting this out there in case someone has had similar experience or can give me a tip about it in the comments. It, it wouldn't go through my printer. Every time I tried several times and it kept saying that my printer needed paper. So I don't know if it was too thin or what the problem was. Um, but it was not working for me. Now, I, having said that, I only had maybe one or two sheets of this in my printer, but on top of just my regular plain copy paper, but it wouldn't feed through. So what I ended up doing was I did like I do with my tissue paper, but because they were both eight and a half by 11, I taped it just to the very top of, of a piece of just plain copy paper and then it fed through fine. So I'm only mentioning that because I had trouble and I figured this out and it worked. So you do lose that very top of your paper, but for most of these things, you're cutting it up anyway. So um, I wanted to point that out, but if you can see that, the colors just came out. This is, this is on um, that premium paper. And I don't know if you can tell the difference, but even on just the vellum with the white behind it is even, even more bold and, and bright. So I just loved how that looked. So I'm not sure what I'll use it on, but I just think it's really pretty. So um, that's an idea if you do end up downloading those, um, those printables. And then um, while I'm on the paper thing, I guess before I get too far along, I had done some other experiments. Um, if you watched the couple of videos before, where I had left off in my journal, I was working with currency. And you've seen me, if you've been watching this series, I had printed my currency. Um, this was way before I started this project, probably a year or so ago. I had made just like a collage by taping it to paper. I hadn't adjusted the colors on this or anything, or, you know, kind of fooled with the, the scans. So I, I need to maybe do these again and, uh, you know, fine tune them a little bit and then offer those also as downloadables, maybe if you'd want. And then these, I had just copied them just in, you know, without enhancing anything. I just copied them just so that I'd have them um, to use for decoupage and that kind of thing. So these are just kind of undoctored, but uh, I'm, I'm using some of these in what I'll show you today. So I wanted to show those. And then because I was playing around with all that currency, I thought, oh, I have this whole thing of coins too. And they're really neat and different. So um, I thought, well, let me see if I can do something with the coins. So I just laid them out on my copy machine. And let's see, where's one with nothing behind it? This is that on that good paper. I laid them out on my copier. And then I did kind of enhance these a little bit. I don't know how good those are showing up but just to have as like a background paper. And I really love it. Um, I printed it out just in its actual size on this, so it, it kind of looks like matted artwork already, but you can expand it to fill the page and then all of the coins are larger. Uh, so you can play around with that, but I did that one. And then I decided it'd be pretty, since I'm working with book page in this journal, um, to put book page behind it. So I did the same thing. I just copied it with, I laid a piece of uh, book page over it so that you don't see the white top of my of my scanner um, and just did the same thing with that. And I really like it with the book page. And then because I had found that vellum, I decided to play around with it on vellum. Um, and you can see it's, you know, you can see right through it. So that's kind of fun too. And this is of course in its actual size. And then this is what it would look like when you enlarge it to fill the whole page. So I just thought that was kind of fun. I don't know if I'm gonna use these in this journal. They're a little contemporary looking to me, which is fine. I'll use them in some point for something, but I just wanna show you just some different ideas um, to use your coin and currency. And then I had um, taken some of this old book page, the ones that were kind of brittle for things that were larger, but I liked the color of them. I went ahead and 
I had, this was a piece, I don't know if you can kind of see that there's a shimmer on there. I was playing around with one day with my jelly plate and there was some leftover metallic paint on there. So I had just um, put it on this book page and then I ran this through my copier uh, to put this coin on also. So that's, that's kind of how I did that. You can actually do the reverse too. You could do print it on the book page and then run it over your jelly plate. I have actually used this um, in a background that I'm going to show you for uh, one of my cards. So that was kind of me playing around with what can I do with coins. Um, the other thing that I tried that didn't really work very well, but I always like to show things that don't work because maybe you've tried them and have a tip for me. Um, but this is, uh, let's see, where's my little drawer? So, you know when you do like a, a monogram, a little wax seal? Uh, you can get these at Michael's. Um, this one's just an S for Sherry. And you you can get either the little candlestick, which I actually like the best, that you just drip the wax and then press. Or they do them also in a glue stick. So I, I don't have them right here with me, but... I had also purchased some glue sticks that go on your hot glue gun, glue gun that do the same thing. So I tried, I thought, well, I could use the coins and imprint them like a, uh, a seal. And the problem was it didn't show up at all. I even tried, um, let's see, can you kind of see? I used one of the coins. It didn't indent it enough. The metallic is too busy um, of a of a pattern, I guess you'd say, that it doesn't show all the detail of the coin. The coin just doesn't have enough enough uh, depth in its car engraving, I guess, um, to really make that. I tried a little ink on it, which just made it look muddy. So that didn't really work very well. I liked this color for my journal, but it wasn't going to work. Uh, you couldn't see the the. The imprint. So I did try it on this more traditional gold, which I actually like, um, but again, it doesn't show up very well. It's actually showing up on camera, I think, better than it does in real life. So I don't know that I'll use, maybe I'll use that as a piece of it. I don't know. Um, this is just with my S, but these could be things that would be cute in your journal. Um, I'll show you where I was thinking about using it that I ended up not, um, just because it might give you an idea for something else. Okay, so here's where I left off. Um, I have taken everything out. I'm gonna show you where I put it and just show you how big it gets. But um, for anyone that was watching that was new, I wanted you to see how this is supposed to look. You're supposed to have your stacked envelopes um, on the, the top cover of your book. And then normally this is a file folder book. In my case, I, I ended up redoing it and made it more like a satchel. It, it, after a carpet bag since it's a travel inspired thing. I'm not going to open it up right now because I don't have anything in here yet. That'll be um, maybe a, a, the future video. So starting with my envelopes, um, one of the very first things that I had done was I had made a passport um, because it was a travel thing. I won't show you this all to you. There's video about this, but I ended up deciding uh, rather than where I had put it that I liked it right on the front. Um, and I had made this to kind of hold it in. And then this was a card did originally go in this pocket and I'm putting it back here. And I just liked, it has the same paper on it. So I thought that was cute. So that's gonna go there. And then um, this was in the last video. <clears throat> I've added, started adding more embellishment. Um, if you've been following along, you know that I have been making all my own mixed media paper from book page because that's my challenge to just use book page and no decorative papers so i was really timid about adding too much to my papers because i just really liked how pretty they were but you know if if you're using a paper pack you're still adding things to them so i decided to just go for it i don't care how bulky it gets anymore so i've just started doing little this is one of the little buttons that i um, had made and put some resin on and then just a little thing to that tag um, then this was just a plain one that I had. This was my little paper airplane map uh, with where I've been. And then I needed cards for here. So let's see, that's a new thing. So maybe I will yeah, go ahead and show you those. So um, for this one, I finally, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but it was, it almost broke my heart. But my mixed media 
uh, my my master board that I made. This was a collage of a bunch of different scraps of my mixed media papers. So I had scanned it in at this point. And then, you know what I think I did not do, which now I could kick myself, but oh well. Um, I can't remember, I don't know if I, I went ahead and stitched around everything on where, where all the seams were. I stitched them all together and I don't think I remember to scan those in before I cut them apart, but anyway. So I, I finally just decided to cut those apart and use them for cards. And then this is one of those, um, this is on book page, and this was one of those little embellishments with some slow stitching that I had started very early on before I even knew that this was going to be this Bohemian um, journal. So that was just a card that I did. And I liked how you can see when I did the inking, which this is with um, Distress Oxide in Peacock Feathers. Uh, I liked how you could see the pattern of my stitching on the other side. So that was kind of cute. And then I added this little bit of trim. And this is something I want to show you. In fact, I'll just show you right now because it's kind of one of my favorite things that I I figured out. I haven't seen it anywhere. I don't know if, if it exists. If somebody else has done it, let me know. But um, I just kind of was playing around and I'll show you how I was playing and that happened. So um, to do the little flowery trim there, which I have also done on this uh, corner um, uh, pocket. To do that, I used my I just used some of this little trim, but I didn't like how bright it was. I like that whole aged kind of vintage -y thing too. So I just took that and then I used my Mica Distressed Oxide, Distress Mica Spray in Tarnished Brass. And you wanna, it's metallic in there in like a liquid. So you just wanna make sure you have that really mixed up. There's a little ball in there you can hear. Um, so that it's all floating, and then just a couple of squirts of that. If you put too much, um, use a baby wipe and kind of dab it off, and then your heat gun dry it, and you're good to go. So uh, I had pulled out, um, when I was deciding to do jewelry, I had pulled out a bunch of different ribbons that I thought would look good in my journal, so that I'll just have them on hand here. And uh, so I had those. And then I also uh, wanted to do some trim on this, some beaded trim. And I'm just kind of showing you some organizational things too as I go because I don't know if you work like I do, but I get so distracted. I'll be working on something and I'll think, oh, I have that. And then I'll go to get that and it's in a wadded up mess in a drawer. And so I, I stop everything that I'm doing and I go and organize. So I spent a day, I think, um, I have these, I have a thing about drawers and I collect all kinds of little drawers to store all my little bits and pieces. And I did used to sew a lot. So I have tons of trims and that kind of stuff. These were all wadded in a drawer and it drove me nuts. They were all tangled up. So I took the time. Um, I've been wanting to learn more on my Cricut anyway. So I took some cereal boxes, glued them together to make them thicker. And then I made a pattern on my uh, Cricut to cut out these spool shapes for my all my trims to fit in this little sewing machine drawer that I have. So it's just perfect, everything's in there, it fits. I can make these to fit whatever size, I can adjust the size to fit whatever drawer I have um, so that I can stay better organized. So that was one day of going down a little different path. So I got my pocket finished. I also put um, a little, uh, this is one of the first embellishments that I had made. And I showed that this was just with a baby wipe that has different, it looks like tie-dye because it's just the different inks that I had on it. So I, this is in another video how I did that. And then um, made that a little cuter. And then this is my little card and I'm, I'll show you how I did that. So to do that top ribbon, um, I like to just find different little ways to do different kind of, you know, pull outs to grab things. So I, I really liked, um, that ribbon, and I'm gonna show it to you, I think with a different color, cause I think it'll show up better what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna take, this is a darker color, so I think you'll be able to see it better. So I'm just gonna take a piece of ribbon. And the first time I did this, I just tried to wad up my ribbon really tiny to fit it through the hole that I had made. And it worked out okay, but it was a, a little bulky up top here. And when I put this 
trim on, I thought, okay, I'm gonna make a hole right in the hole of one of those. In fact, I could add little, I may add little rhinestone-y things here. That would be cute for the center of those flowers. I might do that. So this little part, if you can see here, is I had cut out one of my coins out of the vellum. Let's see if I can get close enough. I needed some reinforcement there, so I just glued that little half a coin on there. I thought that was cute. So I decided I wanted to see my coin a little bit more, and this thick ribbon kind of covered it up. So I thought, well, I need to make that thinner in the middle. So because my ribbon has this uh, stripe down the center, it kind of made it easy. So I just folded it in half, and I thought I just need to notch around that. So I'm just gonna cut away one side and then cut away the other side. And it made a smaller little loop. So that way I could fit it through my hole and then this was big enough to fit the whole thing through. Let's see if I have a card or something I could do that on just to, let's see. If I have a tag, I can put it in the tag. We'll put it through here just so you can see. And I think it'll be easier for me to hold. So I've put it through there and now I have a loop that I can fit I may have to trim a little bit more. Oops. Okay, so you can see, I'll trim that little bit off. You can see that my skinny part fit through there in my little, and that way it didn't cover up if I had something decorative here. So then I had this up top. Now, originally, even when I had it wider, I'm gonna trim a little bit more away from here. So it will lay a little better. Okay, so I had that. And the first time when I had it stuck in there all thick, I had already cut just my little triangle out, which I liked, and I was gonna stop there, but I thought, you know, I've been working with feathers, and if you've seen my jewelry, I, I there's a design that I do called a chevron necklace. Um, I don't think I have any available right now, but it's just a design I like to do. And so I thought, that would be cuter if I made this look like, and it's very bohemian to me too, if I make this look like a feather. So I just took, because I have this center to keep it together, I just notched a little skinny part out and then leave a wider spot and then notch another skinny one out. and you start to get your little feather shape. I just thought that was so, so fun. Okay, so I'm not gonna finish that one now, but it'll be later. But you can see you do both of them and you just have, looks like a little arrow or a little feather. I just love that. Okay, so that was a, another little fun thing. I'm gonna have to put little gems on those because that's gonna be cute, I think. I won't do it now because the glue won't dry, but like these, only smaller little, sparkly things. So that's going to go there. And let's see, I did the flowers on here because for whatever reason, I decided I wanted that card to be taller than this uh, envelope, which meant it would be peeking out over, but I just thought that was kind of another fun layer. So um, that's that. And then I, this is where I use some of that coin. I did want to use it somewhere in here. So I had taken, this was a book page, just like this one. And I had taken, let's see, what color did I use? I had used my jelly plate, and this is called Color Shift. Um, it's from Folk Art. I just love it. I don't know if you can see how it has, it's metallic, and it's got kind of a gold and purple 
to it. So when I did that, this book page is kind of uh, yellowed already. So when I did it on my jelly plate, uh, it kind of came out that vintagey purple look. And so I had done it on, on this. So it looked just like this, only imagine that it's purple. And then I printed my coin out on it. So I just thought that was a fun little background. I didn't want the whole thing to show um, because it was just like I said, it was a little bit too um, contemporary graphic for me, but I thought for a background paper, it was great. So I'm using my, my coins from around the world. And then this was one of the embellishments that I had made on book page with, with some slow stitching. I was able to use that, had some of the purple in it. When I went around the edge, because my uh, background paper was already purple, for my Distress Oxide, um, I used the Seedless Preserves to just kind of bring out the purple instead of uh, my vintage photo that I've been using. And I found a piece of book page that was like a cover sheet, so it didn't have any printing on it, uh, at least for this part that I could cut out. So it made a nice journal card without having to gesso uh, to make text writable so that and then one of my sticker quotes um, again if you're just catching me for the first time I had done a sheet of sticker quotes I'm going to have these available probably with that paper pack um, that is going to be in my Etsy shop where um, you can well I, I may put it for free I don't know I haven't decided yet if you want to order them stickers on sticker sheets then I would have to do those in my Etsy shop I guess um, but if you just want to download the quotes and print out your own and cut them apart, then that'll probably be in the free download um, with all the other little prompt lists and that kind of thing. So I just used one of my quotes. Um, on this background paper, too, I wanted to kind of show this because I used it in another card. Um, this was uh, the, um, the printed on just on copy paper like this some printed currency and then I went with my jelly plate and let's see what color I think this one is um, also the color shift this one is green flash these both came in a set if I recall that was like dragon set or something like that I don't remember the name of it now but um, you you can buy them individually or in, in like a kit and I think I got those at Walmart um, but anyway, I had I had done a jelly print um, thing, and then it kind of, you see that texture because it's from the brayer. Maybe at some point, maybe I'll do a, just some, a fun day of playing around with the jelly, print, uh, jelly plate. It's something that's new to me. I haven't done it very much, but uh, I wanted, I was playing around, and so I thought I'd, I'd do it with this, something I could do with this project. So that was another one that, um, that's just a little scrap, I guess is where I was going with that. Um, that's behind the the sticker. So I did that, and then this sticker, I, I did cut it down a little bit from the size it was, and I did a little vintage photo, and then some peacock feather uh, for the color, just to kind of get it to look good on my on my card there. So that's just another little another little journal card. But those are two new things from uh, this week that I worked on. And then this originally was in. Uh, that front pocket, you know, with the tickets. So that's in another tutorial. And then um, I think that's where I want him. Normally, actually, I'm going to take him out. Normally, he was going in this way, which I guess I still can. Um, I like to round the corners. When they're going to go in a pocket, they seem to go in a little easier. So we'll have to maybe figure that out. Okay, and then in the next one... I think that's where actually where I put that. So let's see. I'm not remembering now. This is the little photo album that I haven't put photos in yet, but I think I like that here because I like that stitching to to stick out. So maybe we'll do that there. Okay, and then I don't know where I had this one. I think I had him here. Maybe we'll put him back there. Okay, and then this is a new page. This is another um, a piece from the uh, master board that I did. You can see that I had added the stitching. So this is the actual thing. I cut it apart. And then I just added another one of my little embellishments. This was cut out uh, from a piece of the paper that I had done. And then I did some slow stitching and added some little gems. And then this little glittery spot is 
um, these little stickles and I'm not sure which color. I think it, this one is, these are from Ranger and I'm not seeing a color on this one. This came in a little set too. It came with some of those liquid pearls and then these two of the glitters. So it's kind of a gold color. So that's on that one. And then um, this is another little thing that I'll show you. This was another page that I had just started and I don't have an insert for there yet, but I do have something for this little pocket. This is just another one of my papers. Um, I think I'm, I can't remember if I showed it in a previous video or not. It wasn't uh, quite long enough to fit this length. So I did cut it apart and put another piece of paper in between. Um, just to give it the length that I needed. So I made this pocket. Um, and so inside that pocket, I have a little new thing to show. So I had been working with currency. And so the other thing that I had on my list, this will show my age, but back in the day, before people had credit cards, um, when you traveled, you took traveler's checks for safety. I think they may still make them, but that you had to then we didn't have credit cards so um i'm i decided to do some traveler's checks in like a checkbook folio kind of thing so again this is just with one of my mixed media papers um i haven't done too much to it i just you know made it to a little pocket um i i don't know that i'll embellish it up anymore but i did want to show one thing that i have been doing um uh, if you can see that this has a little bit more of a sheen when I've been doing um, either checkbook covery things or book covers or um, a medallion on something, I like to change the sheen of the paper because when you do these mixed media papers, all of them are kind of more of a, a matte. You know, I'm just using acrylic paint. So I get some, the metallic pens that I've been doodling with give it some shine. And then I've been using my sparkle spray that I love on different things, the Sheer Shimmer, um, to give it another little dimension. But the other thing that I found is if I use um, like a gloss Mod Podge instead of the matte, then I also get another little sheen to it. And then it just feels more uh, durable and wearable. So when I do that, because you know with Mod Podge, if you brush it on, you have brush strokes. I take my scrim, that I use and take your scrim while your Mod Podge is wet, just lay it down and go over it with a brayer. I use this speed ball, you can, it's a mess, I never clean it, uh, for glue things. So I have the nice clean ones that I use for paint, but this is just a softer roll. I've had it forever, for way before I ever did this paper craft stuff. Um, and I just go over that, that way I don't mind that there's glue on it. So keep a separate one for that. And then that gives you just kind of, gets rid of your um, your brush marks and it gives you that kind of linen texture. So I did that for the cover. And then for the inside, just another piece of, um, and again, you can see that has the shine. And I just wanted to make it, you know, um, even though Traveler's Checks, they come in like a little book, let you get however many you want. I went online instead of using book page, because I've used book page for all of this, and this is not decorative paper, I printed it out just on cheap copy paper. Uh, I went ahead and found a little specimen, it said specimen on there, so it's it's not real, um, but just a, an American Express Traveler's Check. Now I've been trying to learn my Adobe Illustrator and all that, but I just didn't have the patience. I wanted to try to design my own um, Traveler's Check for this project, and then I can give you the downloadable the digital so you can print it out but i just i haven't done that i don't know that i have the patience right now to do that but i went ahead and just on my copier you can um on one piece of paper you can tell it to print 16 or not i think this might have been nine that i was able to get this size i i needed it to fit in my book so you just play around with um your printer to get whatever size you need to fit i'll tell you the measurement of this just so you know but um, you know, your envelopes are going to be, that you're putting it in, are going to be maybe a different size. But this is four and a half by, uh, let's see, just over two and three quarters for the cover. 
Uh, so that make these are three and three quarters by two and a quarter. And I made them a little bit, I wanted that space of white at the top so that I could cut them apart and they would all have the part that goes into the checkbook cover. And I didn't glue this in yet, I'll do that right now. I, I wanna glue it in there, but I didn't wanna do it until I showed you uh, how I put it together. So I ran this uh, with through my uh, sewing machine with no thread in so that I could make it perforated, okay? So that they, they're all just like little, little uh, you can use it as a little notebook, uh, you know, journal on the backs of them, tear them out and whatever. But I just, I wanted to stay with my theme. So I just stapled them across the top and then I'm just gonna use my art glitter glue and I'm just gonna go front and back and maybe in the seam here, just to kind of get them to stay in there. And I'll just hold that for a little second here. And then you have your checkbook style. Traveler's checks. Okay, so that little guy will go here. And then I still need to make a card for there. And the one thing about working with book page is it's fragile. So I keep finding myself touching up mostly because I am handling this so much. Um, it came off. That I'm getting all my inking off and that kind of thing. Okay, so that's that page. And then let's go to the other side because I'm almost ready for the last bit there. So on this side, what did I have here? These are just a couple of ticket shapes. And then I had also, um, I think I showed these in the last video. Um, I took some of the currency and just took parts of it and just made little um, tickets there. So those will go in the front. I had something different here in the front and it kept falling out because it was too thick. Um, in the way this was, so I've, I've, I've opted for this. I think it works better. And then I had my my boarding pass. This is a free downloadable that, um, that you can print out and cut out. And that's just gonna go here. And then I just had the ticket portion because I used the other side, you'll see, for a pocket. So that was the tap. Uh, stub for my boarding pass and then this was another another little uh fold out thing um that i showed in another video okay another little journal thing so that's gonna go there and then here i had my accidental pocket so i ended up this this used to go here and it just kept falling out so this is just another little another little pocket there's a, a ticket in there and that had my embellishment, so I like that sticking out there. And then let's see what goes in here. Oh, my fan. My little fan. That's another video. And again, if you if you haven't seen these before, it's a fan that you can journal on the back. And then this was my kind of for uh, my my billfold, we'll call it. And this was where I was gonna put, um, because it's all currency related, I was gonna put my little uh, seal medallion there, but uh, I ended up not liking it. So I just, I put a little bit of that sheer ribbon that I like just to decorate that edge. And then we'll just put some, let's just put some currency. These were all ones that I showed in another video, that just some different um, currency that I've decoupaged to book page. Uh, to make some journal cards. This was the one I did with the jelly plate. So you can embellish those up more. I just, I need them to kind of stay flat. So we're just gonna leave it like that. And then I did some more, a couple more to put in this one. This one I ended up making a pocket. I don't think I had showed this. This one is one of the um, 
pieces of currency, and then you can embellish it. And, you know, even it's still flat, but I just kind of used some uh, stitching on this one. I actually, I don't know if you can see that. I actually uh, used my sewing machine to get the holes done, so I had no thread in my machine, and I ran it around the edge. But then I hand stitched that because this is like a metallic embroidery thread. I couldn't put that on my machine. So I hand stitched around the edge and then it wasn't quite enough. So I took a gold pen and then manually did that. So if you don't have a sewing machine or don't want to do it by hand, you can just put the stitches on with a pen. And then using my pen, I just, you can see it's kind of metallic. I just added some more um, and there's some stitching here and just added another little embellishment there added some glitter and a little thing there. So you can just kind of fancy up your currency even to use them for pockets. So for that one, I just, I did some plain cards and we'll put that in there. And then I had mentioned in my last one too, one of the other things that I had done was I had printed currency on tissue paper. Um, you've seen that if you've watched some of the other videos. So this, you could decoupage the tissue paper to the book page and it gives you a thinner, uh, a thinner weight. And then I have uh, done the gesso on the back so that you can write on them. But because they're thinner, I thought they'd fold. My husband always carries a money clip, so I thought that would be cute. So then I actually took some of my mixed media paper and I just, it's really stiff because it's a few layers and they're glued. So I just really kind of wrapped it around a paper clip and glued it on and then just added some of those stickles, that glitter stickles on the, for some, some jewelry. So that was cute for my, for all my currency portion. And then, do I have a card for here? I think I don't have anything for inside this yet. I need to work on that. And then this was my puzzle, puzzle piece in a case that I did there. And then this is my pocket that I had done with the, um, with the boarding pass. But then I added to it <clears throat> because it was a pocket. I wanted it to be a little fancier. So I did some slow stitching on that too and just a, another little embellishment that I added there and some little gems. So I think that's where I have left off. So now I just, I really just have this, this, a couple of insert cards that I need to do. And then you can see it's not going to close ever. So I think it's gonna be fine. It's gonna look really cute to just sit on the shelf exploding like this. Uh, and then I do need to do some things that I'm gonna put inside i'll go ahead and open this this has kind of been my nemesis i almost showed it to you ugly um, but i haven't i ended up touching it up and i'll show you i'll show you why so uh if you've done um paper bag brown paper bag um leather that's going to be more durable or if you use actual fabric that's going to be more durable I was using my book page challenge and I made my leather just out of book page, which is very fragile. Um, and I have tried to sturdy it up and stuff with different things, but uh, you'll have to watch that video to see what happened there. But um, just the wear and tear of me holding this, handling this all the time, I ended up with it looking like really old, beat up luggage, which, you know, you travel a lot, it's gonna look old and beat up, but it was really kind of not attractive to me. So this morning I actually just finally gave up on my, I had been using my Distress Oxide, you know, in my little dauber. I went for the big guns because uh, there's just was too much white showing from the book page and I really needed it to soak into the paper so that if it moves again, it's not just white again. So I, I went to my um, Distress Stain. It's got the little uh, kind of like shoe polish top and this is vintage photo, but then, then I can actually really, you know, let it soak in. So I've done that all on the little parts that were kind of uh, showing white. So I've had this happen on my, uh, on my luggage tag too. So you just, you know, it, it just soaks in a little bit better and uh, gets it from, keeps it from looking so worn. So I will be doing this idea of luggage tag and that kind of thing, I think again in something but with more durable um, materials. 
so I won't be challenging myself with a book page, but this is again another video, a different one. Now I had it hanging here. I didn't like it at all. It just, it bothered me. So I ended up cutting off that little, that little thing that I had there. I'm not sure where I'm going to put it. It'll go somewhere, um, but probably not till the end. I was just tired of, of all the wear and tear I was doing on it. So um, that'll come later. But inside um, this is uh, more like this style. So I'm going to end up putting some things in here. And one of my ideas that I will share, even though I haven't done it yet, um, is, uh, you know, it's a place that I could put like postcards or brochures or anything like that. Um, the other thing is some people, not me, but um, some people uh, they who are sketch artists or artists, they will actually draw, um, you know, on their trip. And then I, I thought this was cute for like a portfolio um, to put uh, any of your drawings or photos, anything like that can go inside of there. So I think that's kind of what I'm going to do. I've been playing around, um, you know, I'm always joking that I'm not an artist. So I have this um, Jess Meharry coloring book, adult coloring book that I love. And so I thought, you know, I'm just going to take her approach um, and just go for it and just kind of play a little bit, not be so afraid. So I took some of my pictures. I think I might have shown these before. I took some, or at least on my Facebook page, um, I took some of uh, my photos from a trip to Africa. And I started with this one, the elephant. And I just did it on book page and just kind of doodled in her style um, to kind of just free myself a little bit and not be so afraid to put something on paper. And it's just kind of a fun, relaxing thing to do at night. So, um, so I tore this one, but it's all mounted on another something and then it'll be okay. Uh, but I thought it'd be fun. This one, I was actually, was a picture of a zebra. And before I had the stripes on it or anything, I just had the kind of horse shape done and I asked my husband if he could tell what that was and he said a unicorn so I had I had to make a zebra unicorn so I thought that was fun and then I've just you know some more playing around I thought this could actually end up becoming a corner pocket I don't know that these will go in this journal um I just wanted to share you know some of the other little things I've been playing these were some of my um jelly plate things that I played around with and then I started doodling on those too so these are just some kind of other little direction I might be headed for uh, what might go inside of that um, for my travel thing. And then I will be finished with this. Now, if you have stuck around, um, I think that's all I have to show on this journal. But like I said, I, I, I kind of went to a different direction. I had a customer had asked me to make, um, I had been making these buttons, you know, the resin buttons. There's a whole video on that. And I had a, one of my really good jewelry customers that I hadn't heard from in a while had um, asked if I could make her some earrings out of the birch. So um, this is just a uh, faux bois. Uh, it's a textured paper, almost the texture of wallpaper. It's like wrapping paper, but it, it's really heavy and textured. And um, it, it just looks like, I know my light's in the way here. It just looks like birch. So she wanted me to make some earrings out of these for her. So I, in doing that, I use recycled materials. So I love this. So I started taking my cereal boxes and all that kind of stuff, and I'm going to do a tutorial. This I think is going to be my next series. So I had I have yet because I'm new to all this. I have yet to make an actual book cover from scratch, and and fill it with signatures. I haven't done that. So I want to. Um, I started out just with mixed media and altered books, and then I've now moved into these junk journals. So I think my next project, I want to be a, a, a proper book. So I, I had all this book page scraps that I've been playing around with. So all these are food boxes. And this is step one. I, I, I like to get all my um, demo things ahead. This is actually just an Advil box. Um, so I like to get so that I can do different stages and show you. Um, so I'll be doing that. This is step one. And then um, I think my, my theme... Um, because I like so many different styles um, and when I've done one I like to kind of go to an extreme for the next project just to give myself um, a variety and my this bohemian one that's really a style that I love but I also just love grunge and rust and dirt and vintage and all of that 
I just it's it's kind of a, a thing with me if you if you've known me for many many years and you knew when I had space and I used to repurpose furniture and do things I, I always loved rusty rustic stuff so I had taken this was a couple years ago uh, when I when I go on trips this is I some of you may do this too I I was gonna say it sounds weird but I don't think it is um, when I'm on sightseeing or on a trip or anything I tend to take lots and lots of pictures, but it's not, not maybe what everyone else would take pictures of. I have a thing, like I said, for old junky things. And this is a town in California called Bodie and it's, it's pretty close to us an hour or so away. And we had taken a trip there. It's an old ghost town. It was left the way it was. And I'm just gonna find some little pictures. So I've done, I probably took close to 200 pictures. I have a thing with texture and pattern and doors, old doors, old wood, rust, all that kind of stuff. So I have taken pictures. I love this one because it's actually, um, most of these buildings you couldn't actually go in. You were taking it through a window. And so I had like a double exposure thing here where I'm seeing the reflection of the building behind me. Uh, but I just love it wallpaper is literally paper like pages of paper tacked on the wall um but it's it's this this whole town has just been left how it was everything's still there every dust dirt you know if if rain has come in it's rained on the wallpaper so i just have photos and photos of torn wallpaper and so i've i've taken this is 84 of my favorites um old furniture just everything. So this is my inspiration. And I'm gonna go through these pictures. I will probably, you know, end up trying to make some pattern paper, different things, I don't know, with this. But this is gonna be my inspiration. So I started by making that cover, uh, my first book cover, and I just love how it turned out. So this is um, from, I can't even remember what kind of box it was now, but I, I wanted to play with a couple of different things. I had been maybe watching some videos again recently. I hadn't for a while. And so I took some techniques that I've seen recently and just applied them to what I know I want my next project to be. So this cover was made all recycled. It's the book page, some gesso, uh, like I said, a food container. Um, I did use some scrim for here. Um, I just love how that tattered, like the tattered curtains in the window looked. And then to make the coloration of this, I used um, instant coffee and instant matcha tea. So um, I will be showing you how I did that. I did a whole bunch of, um, I just got a wild hair one day. And when I start cleaning, I had my ironing board where I cut my paper and iron it was covered with scraps. So I just took that pile of scrapbook page and I started just doing these master boards uh, with it and then putting um, some gesso, rolling it on with a brayer and then using the tea and coffee to get some different effects. And so I just love how these turned out. So I want to do some wallpapery things. I don't know where that will go, but um, this was just me kind of playing around with all my trash. This was actually just scraps of even just trimmed um, copy paper. Um, then I decided since the tea and all that worked so well, I remembered I had some uh, powder pigments. So I actually played around with some of those too to maybe get some of those wallpaper uh, feeling, you know, thing. So that's what I played with. I did this on uh, over the weekend. Um, I did some on book page since that's what I'm working on now because I think, you know, I still have a huge pile of book page and because I want this to be an old vintage thing, I think that I'll still be using a lot of, of book page in this. I'm, I'm half tempted to not use decorative paper again, but I think I will use some. I have um, a Tim Holtz uh, vintage wallpaper pack that I hear I think is being discontinued. Um, I just watched a thing his recently, his new products that he's coming out with, and some of them are going away and some of them are coming back in a different format. So 
Um, I think that might be the case with those. But anyway, so this is going to be my next series. Um, I will not continue with it or do these videos, though, until uh, I have the current one finished. So I do want to finish that up. And then I'm going to still do some jewelry things. You know, I want to, because I make jewelry and I haven't been doing that much lately, I want to, at the conclusion of this series, have some uh, jewelry pieces that were influenced by this series. So uh, I'll have that and then hopefully the downloadables and I'll have some things to put on my Etsy shop and kind of have it all together. Now, if you comment on any of the videos in this series, I have announced this in a few videos already, I'm gonna be doing a drawing at the end of this. Um, it's probably gonna be a ways out still um, because uh, I have a retired husband and the weather is getting nice and I think we may be wanting to do a little road tripping. Um, so I'm just not sure how much I'm going to get to, to work. Of course, I will take things with me when I'm gone. I'm not sure when we're going, but, um, it, it just may prolong this project. So you'll have plenty of time, comment in any of the videos and you'll get your name entered and the prize is going to be happy mail. It's going to be all kinds of little, uh, leftover bits and pieces, um, from this project. So you'll have a nice little kit of things um, to play with. So have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.